Hey everyone, King Size Customs here, doing a trailer load haul for you. I know it's not usually what I do on this channel. I will get back to cars. However, I live on the East Coast. Well, technically the Mid Atlantic, but it's still the east of the Mid Atlantic, so the weather is getting kind of hard to customize. I do have a shed with a heater in it. I'm still working on trying to perfect my airbrushing technique. But, again, winter is coming for all of you Game of Thrones fans, which I'm not. But you're going to see some uh, not great driving here from me. I do the best I can. But uh, I want to talk to you guys about something a little bit more near and dear to my heart. And that would be my six months with Goodwill. Yeah, it's been six months since I started my job. Well, there's still a little bit of wiggle room on that. It's been six months since I started with Goodwill, the company. Uh, I have a couple more weeks and then it'll be six months when I started working at the retail location. So, that being said, a couple of things I've observed, a couple of things I've noticed, a couple of changes in myself that i noticed. See, when I started off at the uh, retail location, I was really nervous. I tried to be, you know, above everything, and it just was, it was hard. I mean, I tried to, I was scared, let's be honest, because here I am, I got transferred out of one location because I couldn't do the job there, and then I end up doing, getting transferred to another location, and I keep always asking, hey, am I doing okay, am I doing alright? Uh, is this okay? Is this good? Is this happening because of this or that or the other thing? I was just really conscientious. Now, I've been there a little bit. A little bit. I'm the funny guy, you know. They all like me there. I make them laugh. Just stuff like that. Um, see, the other thing is... The other place where I worked. The other part of Goodwill. Where I worked. Was more of a specialized type deal more of a office work and now I work in a warehouse in the back of a store those of you who've ever been to a Goodwill you know where you drop off your donations well I'm working a few paces behind the donation people so but I just the reason I talk about how it's a different environment and why I say it is a different environment is you know I used to go to first part of the job wearing a shirt and tie and everybody felt so uh, I want to say I was a little intimidated because it was more of a uh, and I'm putting giant air quotes here professional environment this is more of a blue collar environment where I'm working now those of you who don't really know what the difference between white collar and blue collar is, is white collar typically refers to office workers blue collar typically refers to those doing manual labor, manual trades, where you would have like a denim vest or a gen denim, vac uh, denim vest or a denim jacket, pardon my not being able to speak. Those of you who remember these videos from a while back remember that I can't speak that well. So, so that's one major thing that has changed a little bit. It's just, I'm in a different environment where things seem to be a little bit easier people seem to be a little bit more comfortable with who they are there's not as big an intimidation and for me there's not really that much of an intimidation factor there um one thing that happened while I was working there was I actually was able to get overtime which was nice and a manager was nice enough to be able to drive me to my house because I couldn't arrange transportation in the time when they let me know that hey uh, when they asked me hey can you work overtime is there a way you can do it I'm like I can cancel my ride but I can't get another ride out and the manager was like I'll drive you home so that was nice they really did appreciate it um, honestly I was doing it just so nobody got stuck at the job which hey you know the overtime money was good it wasn't wasn't super super great it wasn't what I was expecting but any little bit helps I'm trying to sound as 
uh, nice about it as I can when saying, oh, I didn't get paid what I thought I was going to get paid, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, they offer me overtime again, I'll take it in a heartbeat. Shoot. Um, it's just... So, I got overtime. The manager actually drove me home. We had a conversation about their previous vehicles, and then, you know, they were like, so if you can see well enough, why can't you drive? And it's like, well... Part of it is my peripheral. Part of it is that I really do compensate for how bad I can, for how badly my vision is. The other thing was, um, you know, those of you who know me know that I pretty much got to go to college for free due to my visual impairment. Um, this manager was like, "So wait a minute, are you still going to school?" Or I'm like, "No, I I graduated last year with a bachelor's degree in psychology." She's like, "Well, why are you working here?" at Goodwill. I went, I just told her. I'm like, everywhere I applied once, six months working experience, and she's like, she said some, uh, language that I don't like to use on this channel, but she's like, then, that just, in other words, it was just, she said, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so, about that, I'm like, yeah, that's just, that's how it is, but, the other thing I told her, this manager, was that it's like I was like, hey, you know, I I like what I do, and for a long time that actually is that actually is true. I don't wake up in the morning and be like, oh god, I gotta go to work. It's I wake up and I'm like, well, gotta go to work. Let's see what kind of fun, crazy things happen today, or what donations I get to price. Now for the last week, I was working as a donor greeter, which is my regular position. Those of you who don't know what that is, that's the person who helps you unload your car and brings the donations into our warehouse. And let me tell you, that is a difficult job, especially on a Saturday when everybody's off and it's like, oh, we just cleaned the house. Let's go take all our stuff to Goodwill. And some of it, some of it's used goods, but a lot, like, some nice used goods. Some of it was crap. People were donating actual literal trash. Oh. This guy doesn't let me come over. See, that was all my fault. Because I thought he was just a single trailer, not a double trailer. And he didn't let me come over. I had heard on the GPS that I needed to be in the left lane. And here you can see clearly. He's hauling doubles. I'm hauling doubles. I'm doing my best to get out of his way. So, keep left. Not too great there, but for the rest of the trip, there's almost no real issues with accidents or anything like that. I'm trying to get in front of him, and I think, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I get in front of him. <laughs> so, back to the other story about being a donor greeter. One day, it was everybody and their brother had, was bringing their yard sale rejects. And what I mean by that is stuff that didn't sell at a yard sale. I'm just getting stormed by donations. So we had to drop a Gaylord outside. Well, two of them. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's, a, it's not a derogatory term. It's, it's a box on a pallet. Most of your stores have those. Most of your deliveries... Uh, when you go in the back, the warehouse, the storehouse of a store, you'll see boxes of products on top of a pallet. And that's, that's a Gaylord. I had to do this because we had just so much stuff that people donated. And a lot of it really wasn't worth putting out. However, there was one thing. Somebody had donated an elliptical, which is an exercise machine that's like a bike. Almost like an exercise bike. And I'm standing there, I'm like... How the heck am I going to get this out of these people's truck? Well, they helped me, but I went and took it over to Overflow. I could barely move the darn thing. And then, <laughs> two days ago, after uh, before two days before recording this, uh, people actually bought it, and I needed to get somebody to help. I needed to get the manager to help me load it into their pickup truck, and it actually fit perfectly. It was a little four-foot bad Ford Ranger, and I'm like. How do I tell these people to go and get a bigger truck? But fortunately enough, we got moved into a pickup truck. And then the other day, yesterday, as of recording this, 
uh, these people bought an elliptical and my manager Chris comes over to me and he's like hey Kevin you eat your Wheaties this morning I'm like I know what's going on somebody bought a big heavy elliptical I'll help you guys move it he's like alright good glad somebody was listening so <coughs> excuse me it's just it's been one heck of a week it's been a tiring week too Now, the other thing, too, is working five days a week straight, uh, doing that job's very difficult. It's very strenuous on your body. That's why I sound so congested. I'm just really tired. I haven't caught up on sleep. I've been trying to do the things I want to do before the winter comes, but I'm pretty sure all of you know that when you're tired and your body's telling you it's tired, you got nothing. You can't fight it. You just gotta go. So. Oh. Here's another part of my excellent driving. Excellent air quotes. But this doesn't really result in a crash as you'll see. I don't know what's going on here. But. You guys will see how I manage this. So that's just. That's been a couple of things with my work. You know, I plan to do something for my six-month anniversary. I plan to just buy a little something nice. I don't know. I was looking at watches. I was looking at a Pagani Designs watch, but I saw they got some bad reviews. See, I've always wanted a Rolex since I could remember what a Rolex was. It just, I wanted a really nice watch. Now, my work watch is a cheap $8 George, which is Walmart's brand, for those of you who are unfamiliar. But yeah, it's an $8 watch. I've had it for about, I want to say a month. I wear it constantly, because it's a work watch. It's 8 bucks. If it gets destroyed, I don't care. Now, the watch that you guys have seen in some of my other videos that I wear a lot is called a G-Shock. It's made by Casio. It's an analog and digital watch. It has my alarms for when I get my medication, but since I have those on my telephone my cell phone um really having an alarm isn't that necessary for me to have on a watch for me to have a watch with alarms so but i can't really afford a rolex at this time the submariner that i really want even a uh, quote unquote knockoff or a clone of that watch and it would say rolex is a thousand dollars i don't have a thousand dollars to just go throw on a watch uh, Rolexes that I have been looking at are a thousand or like one thousand four hundred dollars and this is on eBay I don't even know if they're authentic date just uh, date just watches what I really want is a Rolex president but still I haven't seen any of those pop up anywhere and again I still can't afford them so but I was looking at a Pagani Submariner for about 149 I've seen people getting them for like 80 bucks I've seen people be, uh, buying the what is it Invicta Submariner for about $80 and I, I'm really thorough with what I buy I watch a ton of reviews a lot of people do not approve of them now I'm not really a watch snob per se I always just wanted a Rolex because again Reliable. Everybody knows the name. Everybody knows it's a Rolex. Even uh, non-watch nerds or non-watch aficionados know that you know a Rolex is a really good watch. It's a really expensive watch, though. But will I get one? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll be successful. Maybe my quote-unquote YouTube career, yeah, giant air quotes around that, will take off, and I might be able to buy a Rolex. Any of you watching, let me know if you have a Rolex. Yeah, and let me know what your experience with it is. The other thing, too, is um, working there, you know, it's it's just it's a fun experience. We laugh a lot. We joke a lot. We just do a lot of fun things. I mean, within reason. Nothing meaning any harm to anybody else. But. And, as I said... I do enjoy going there. 
I hate when I get there late due to not being able to drive because to tell you the truth if it was me if I was able to drive I'd be there early every day I'd just be sitting out in the parking lot in my vehicle but I don't have one of those and I don't have a license can you tell so um what else did I want to talk to you guys about well that's really it honestly a lot of other things I really have nothing to talk about too much I mean when I started off doing these trucking talks it used to be like I had a million things to talk about in school and how my life was going but really there's no updates I'm still trying to uh, you know just not trying to but I'm still collecting cars I've slowed down with that a lot slowed down with a lot of things. I don't really do as much as I used to. Maybe it's because I'm working now, I get more tired than I used to, I don't have all the free time I used to. See, in college I never thought that I had free time. A lot of times on Fridays I would spend just in the library working on stuff because when nobody was home it just, to me, it felt weird to be at home by myself while everybody else is out working and by everybody else I mean my mom and my brother but uh, it just it felt weird to be here by myself I felt like I couldn't focus I felt like I couldn't study now at work it's like well shoot everybody's out I got the house to myself so that's really that Alright guys, I'm actually going to end this little conversation here and wait for you guys and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you don't mind watching the rest of this and I'll see you in the next one. Alright? Alright.
200 meters, turn right. Turn right and then turn left. Turn left. You have reached your destination. Well done, although frankly I did all the hard work.